My name is Emma Salter. I am a second year graduate political communication student. Okay. Um, really curious how your role as a journalist has changed since Donald Trump sort of happened to all of us. I don't think it's, it's it hasn't changed in any real fundamental way. If anything, it has reinforced the work we were doing. And this is what people think. We were getting messages from people after the election, like, oh, how are you holding up? You're going to be OK. I'm like, w what do you mean? I said, if anything, this entire election and, and what will transpire now reinforces the need for what I've been up to for the last 10 years and what all of my colleagues have been up to. Basic, explanatory, accountability, and analytical reporting of what the heck is going on in Washington. Uh, my boss, Marty Barron, uh, responding to the president for saying various things about the press or about the Post in general, has always said, we're not at war with this administration, we're at work. Hmm. And we would be no matter who, who, the, who is the president. And what's wonderful about the last two years is that for whatever reason, for whatever your reason, readers have finally realized there's real value in the reporting that we do to the point where that not only are they reading it, but they've stopped clearing their cash to get the new 10 article limit. They've stopped having multiple <laughs> sign-ins so that they don't have to pay for it, and they started paying for it because they finally realized it actually is worth paying however much uh, for the news, whether it's from us, from the New York Times, from the Wall Street Journal, uh, or wherever else. I mean, the New Yorker and Vanity Fair have seen record subscriptions in the past year for whatever reason. But that's a good thing for the industry overall, and it's reminded all of you who want to get into this business, you have to be willing to pay for this, because if you don't, you're not going to have a job. Unless you're fortunate to work at a news organization where you have a billionaire bookstore owner who's willing to float you, uh, <laughs> which is what he's done. And, and the beauty of what, of what Mr. Bezos has done in buying the Post is he has given us such great uh, ability now to, to, uh, to do our job, and, and that's what we're doing. So the only difference day to day is because this administration is less willing to organize itself around a central message every day, you see them making news on multiple fronts at, different, at all hours of the day that it just scrambles what it is you're supposed to be focused on. And it begins the moment he starts tweeting in the morning and can stretch until late at night as he continues doing so. I have no problem with him tweeting, because I know some of you are probably thinking that and going to ask about it. It's the basis of something I'm actually writing for SPA right now. There's a textbook they're working on, and they asked me to, to, to write about this. And look, what he's doing over Twitter by making news is no different than what Franklin Roosevelt did with fireside chats back in the day on the radio or John Kennedy did on television, or that Ronald Reagan did even more effectively on television in the 80s, and Bill Clinton as well in the 90s. He's merely doing what a large percentage of the American public does and reaching them where they are, which is glued to their phone. And the fact that he does it in a tone that is a little more conversational and familiar to people, people like that, people don't like that, but the reality is that's how most people talk on social media. And he understands that. And you know, so the, so the difference is that your day could begin at 5.55 in the morning when he starts tweeting because we've all set the alert to his Twitter account. And uh, sure enough, I remember early on in the administration, we would get emails from our news desk in, in the newsroom saying, he's up and he's tweeting. <laughs> and that compelled us to sort of change the way we, we, uh, we cover him, not only at, at the White House, but on the Hill, because often what he's doing, of course, is calling out members of Congress. And, uh, and that requires us to be on top of it. So to me, it only reinforces the work we've been doing, uh, makes it more essential, uh, but the hours are a little longer and, and can be a little more uh, chaotic, uh, but that's by virtue of the fact that this is an administration that, at least up until recently, was far more scattershot in what it was talking about on a given day. It's been a little more organized, I'd argue, since, uh, since John Kelly took over over the summer.